Welcome back to this week's Carpinionated. I'm Doug Stewart. I'm the senior digital content producer at Fox 61 in Hartford. And this is my friend, Glenn. Hi. And this week, what we're going to be talking about is kind of a blobby subject, like a amorphous, you know, kind of thing. We're talking about cars that we think are beautiful, cars that, and in the same vein, cars that we would like to see brought back in some fashion or form. If it's like the Rivology Mustang, where they built a whole new under you know car with a new engine underneath it, and it looks like a 1966 Mustang, maybe that's what we're talking about. But these are cars that make us stop and go, that's a beautiful car. That's a beautiful car. So, Glenn, why don't you start us off? Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to start off with, like, I'm going to do three, two, one, okay? And I think the third one might like get the most kickback um, and people going, you think what is beautiful? But um, it's just, it's a car that has always uh, just kind of fascinated me and it and it's how it takes a basic, basic, basic shape and makes it somehow just look like a car and dying to get behind the wheel. Uh, the, the old, uh, like up to 1973 Datsun 510 sedan. Oh. Yeah, right? Do you remember these? Um, BMW in like the early 90s kind of went back to the old Datsun 510 and sort of stole a lot of the design language. And that's also a beautiful car. I just, I chalk it up to, to Datsun. This was a successful car to drive too. Uh, it made a lot of lists. Um, it maybe was a little derivative of the of the BMW 2002, which was also very squared and boxy and everything. Yeah. Um, the 510 was, but if you're going to copy a car, yeah, copy yeah. right, right. And I think that you know that was intentional behind the 510. They were like, let's let's take that, but let's make it a car for the you know the the bulk of the population. They did make a wagon out of it. I think I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the little it was, it was, sedan. It was, a, it was just yeah. We when I was a kid, we had neighbors that had one, and it it was a delightfully light, fast car. It was just. It was fun. And it was the kind of car that you could tell every time somebody got behind the wheel, it was just dying to be driven, you know? So uh, I, I always have had a soft spot for that. And also because there's no more Datsun anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I never figured out why they, they went to the Nissan thing other than that was. Well, because they, they would just have one name throughout the world. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I miss Datsun. I miss the, you know, we could have been special. Why? Um, <laughs> um a lot of people race those cars. They were big, big. Um, I forget the class. I don't know anything about uh, classes for racing. Maybe it's SCCA, but or or something. And I stand to be corrected. But I, I had I remember seeing a lot of those being raced. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. For for good reason too. You know, it was uh, it was light but sound. Um, they were just. It was a fun car. So everybody's taste knew, um, but. One of those one of those cars from when I was you know a really younger kid that that made me go oh, I so want one of those you know uh, mm -hmm. so number two uh, this is going a little bit more mainstream almost to the point where it might be a little trite but the 1983 Porsche 928s uh, also known as the risky business car um, <laughs> because. Damn, I want to drive that car and be chased by Guido the killer pimp. Come on. Oh my God. It was just, it was so cool, you know? And everybody thought everything in the 80s was cool. Neon clothes were cool. Big, big, big hair was cool. But the 928S was actually really, really cool. Um, it was just, it was a gorgeous car. And, you know, German engineering and all that. So that's another one. I mean, if they sold that new, I don't care how I, I would, I would, you know, I'd sell a kidney and I'd get one of those. So, um, and then my number one is my first, my first real car crush. Um, and this again might be something that, that people don't understand, but I know I've told you about this before. So I think you can probably guess where I'm going with this, but uh, the 1973 Ford slash Mercury Capri, uh, the two-door oh, yes. fastback from Europe. Yep. I love this car. Yeah, it's got a few 
design cues that people find questionable, the fake vents, what they call the hockey stick along this. I don't care. I don't care. I wanted one of these so bad when I was a kid. And I still think every well, time it was you were a grown up, there was one time you saw one used and you were like, mm -hmm. I could buy it and I could work on it and put it in my parents' garage. And then I was like, and then when your sister wanted her popsicle stick collection to be in there, your car would be booted out into the cold New England winter. Right, right. And you were right. And I was like, okay, all right, all right. Just had a momentary lapse of stupidity. But yeah, it it uh, it was a gorgeous car, and another one that was ridiculously fun to drive. You know, it was it was a, it was a little German sports coupe. You know, and. Credit to Ford at the time. I don't think they should have marketed it as a Mercury. That was their choice. But they uh, they didn't dumb the car down for the American market. They pretty much imported it as is, and that was smart. Um, so, And they even made a V6 for this car in 73, and it moved. So. Is that in the second gen or is it in the first gen? That was the first generation. And sure. I say 1973 because uh, they I think they started in 69 with the model. Uh, by the time they got to 73, they had cleaned up some of the design language and just looked sharp. In 74, the United States changed its bumper regulations and everything suddenly had honking huge bumpers, you know, yeah. eight inches deep. And it ruined the look of the car in 74. So what, what, 73 was the year. Well, in 73, it still had those bumper regulations, but they could get away with like putting big rubber blocks on them. And that's what a lot of cars did for that interim year. But by 74, I think it changed and it had to be, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, a, a much, you know, the, the, the regulations were different. But right. yeah, there were a lot of cars were like, oh, no. Yeah, the images that I pull up for 73 still had the, the chrome bumpers and it, you know, makes a huge difference on the car. The the 74 is plastic and big and just heavy in it, you know, it kind of ruined the, the look of the car, uh, whether yeah. they liked it or not. But yeah, that's my number one car crush. Um, uh, they're, uh, it just, if they, if, if they're, they brought that car back today with modern technology, again, I would, you know, I'd be sacrificing certain things to to own one, but it was my car crush. It was the car that I, you know, the, the first one where I went, oh, I really want that, you know? Uh, with my list, I'm well, uh, well off the track of a lot of things here. Uh -huh. uh, these are in no particular order. Okay. The 1941 Lincoln Continental in black with uh -huh. the, tan, well, the tan convertible top just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. Um, the link, it's actually, I think it might be a 1940. That's the Starlet mobile. That's that's what a Starlet showed up with with a with a chauffeur and dropped her off at the red carpet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous. Just, just a beautiful car. You know, a long history of Edsel Ford wanting to make it. It's essentially. You know, for lack of a better term, it's custom made, each one of them. And, you know, they they then, you know, stopped making them because of the war and started making them after the war. And they kind of messed it up. But it's a, that's a car. That's that is a car. Um, the second one I would go to and and this is every, not everyone's uh, favorite year, but I would go with a 1966 Lincoln Continental. So the. Um, it's a little bit longer than the original 61. It's more squared off design. Oh, right. Um, I think that kind of mid-century modern design language just really speaks for to me. I just, sure. uh, and I remember seeing them, you know, when I was growing up and just this, they're commanding cars that it, and like almost every iteration of that vehicle through the six from 61 through 69 when it was replaced it's 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 evocative and it and it doesn't ever look old but that's this is the favorite my favorite one of all those the um and i like i said i have uh i have a number of cars on my most beautiful car list that i keep in my phone and this is going to be a odd one out the 1968 to 72 gma bodies and my note here is this iteration of GM A bodies has a certain athleticism, good proportions, and each GM division made it made it their own. 
even the floor model, floor door models look good. So we're talking like the 442 and the Skylark. The Le Mans. Le Mans. Yep. Yeah. The yep. Uh, Chevy Chevelle, uh, which yeah. my, one of my brothers had. Um, that was a great, just the, the proportions and the way it sits and, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, just has a, a great quality to it. Yeah, go ahead. Bill and I were out on the road last weekend uh, heading back from the lake. And uh, when we were going down the main drag, a car pulled up to the intersection that was a fully restored red Chevelle from that era. And I was like, oh, Bill's just, you know, trying to grab the wheel and make sure I don't drive off the road. But yeah, gorgeous. It was, And it was stunning. They had done a gorgeous job refurbishing this car. So yeah. I'm with you on that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And they all, you know, GM obviously gets a knock you know, someone after this, a brand, you know, a badge engineering. And it's, it's, it's a fair point, you know, but each one of these had a different look to them. You're not yep. terrifically different, but enough so that like, it was easy to tell them apart, Yeah, you know, where I think, I think the next generation, uh, especially the, the formal coupes, uh, you just, I think they were all like cookie cutter, but, yep. but, and I'm looking at a, 71 picture of a 71 old 442 just you know that it's you can just almost every time you look at one of these you can almost hear that v8 you know mm -hmm. bum, bum, bum. my grandfather owned um a buick skylark with three on the tree like a three-speed manual transmission and, and these <laughs> these terrible brakes i remember driving it one time I'm like you just put on the brakes i'm like is it ever gonna stop and I looked at it and I'm like, how do you drive this? <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. like, okay. But, so those would be the cars. You know, then I also have some here and there, just as throwing out honorable mentions. Um, 1993 Mazda MX-6. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they didn't sell a lot of them, which I never understood. Oh. Uh, never understood that at all. And For what it's worth, terrible name, but the Ford Probe was a cousin to that car. And I always yeah. thought that the Probe was nice looking too. Not, it didn't have this, it was a completely different shape than the MS6, but I, I thought they did a nice job with it. Horrendously bad name though. I mean, I drive a Probe. Could have been a Mustang. Could have been called a Mustang. That would have been bad. Right, <laughs> right, right, exactly. That's a good one. I, I yep. I'm with you on that as well. And one last one, because I'm weird. Can I guess? The 1978 Plymouth Velare. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that, was, no. that was a joke. Yeah. Preceding was a joke. We owned one of those, by the way. It was yeah. the car that it's when you cranked the wheel all the way to the right or all the way to the left, it stalled. It stalled for no reason other than I don't like you turning the wheel that far. And it would it would literally would stall. I someone yeah. in the notes to this, please explain to me why our 78 Velare stalled when you crank the wheel all the way to the right or all the way to the left. I would love to know. So, but anyways, go ahead. One more. We had a Dodge Aspen with the brocade uh, interior. Yeah, it was very fancy. It was the first car that we had with air conditioning. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no. The car that I'm going for my honorable mention is the 1971, and it has to be a 71. Okay. Not a 72. A 71 Ford Country Squire, because I have a thing for station wagons, and I'm sure when you were growing up, where you were growing up, and this was the car. This was the car that every mom drove, right? Yeah. And it was likely green. And it had the wood on the side and the wire, fake wire wheel covers. Mm -hmm. um, it was, that was a nice car. That was, was a nice, was. nice car. That was the suburban dream back then, you know? It was, it was yep. you know, yeah. <clears throat> people could afford a house and mom didn't have to work. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> much as like the Explorer is now or the, the Toyota Highlander or something like. So you know. I always liked, um, one of our cars was a 2006 Chrysler Pacifica, and I always liked that car because it was really a station wagon, um, yeah. and a cool station wagon at that. That was a that was a very good car, by the way. We used to we used to call that car the big guy who knows how to dance, 
because it, it was real big and chunky and heavy, but it moved really well. So, so. And I thought it was sharp. I thought it was sharp. So. Cool. Cool. All right. Cool. Glenn, any last words? Any last words? Uh, if anybody out there has a 1973 Capri, no, <laughs> I don't have any room in my garage. My parents yeah, live. He in has a garage house. that'll fit it now, and it's his garage. Yeah. And yeah. someday, someday when I'm retired, maybe that dream will come true. But uh, we're not quite there yet. So, but yeah, <laughs> if you time. don't, if you don't know what these cars look like, look them up online because the well, internet, you know, through the magic of editing. We yeah. will have oh, that's right. That's right. See, we don't have the images while we're sitting here yakking, and then Doug splices them in magically. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you were you were saying? Oh, you were saying what you were saying about the nine twenty eight and the and the chase. Yeah, you know that that chase is in the our what I curb our lost episode that YouTube wouldn't show, um, which is actually on the Fox sixty one website if you want to take a look for it. But, Cool. It's it's a great segment on great cars in movies. That's right. That's right. That was a great car and a great movie. So, Glenn, we've reached another ending to our show. <laughs> uh, I, thank you always for joining me in this endeavor. Um, of course. Great. So, all right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye.